Okay, this is my fourth and final installment of my 2KV scope probe design. And here is the finished product. You can see I've got those four RC combinations all in series, just as they were before. But here, got a capacitor right here with the 15 picofarad in parallel with the variable cap for right now tuned to the combination here about 40 picofarad. And this one right here is common trick of the trade kind of thing. Just a twisted pair of wires. And that probably gives me one or two picofarads. That's classic method of getting a, a variable cap. If you only need one, two, three, or four, you know, around that range of picofarads, you can just twist a pair of wires together and then you know, you want, want to twist them a little longer than what you expect, and then you just cut off little tiny bits and pieces until you finally get the exact capacitance that you need. So that's on the, the high voltage input end. Then we go through the coax and over to the compensation box. And right there I got 100 picofarad cap and another variable cap for total right now tuned to about 140 picofarad or so. And also just below that red one picofarad capacitor I got a couple of surface mount resistors in there for, for the, uh, to establish the 100 to 1 DC voltage division ratio. So here's the original schematic. And this is the schematic for the modified probe. Right there is that 170 kilo ohm couple of uh, surface mount resistors I put in there, that in series with this, and then another couple hundred ohms there and all that in parallel with, on this end of it here, the 100, or the one meg ohm resistor inside the scope. That gives me the 100 to 1 voltage division ratio. And then I got rid of this 100 nano Henry inductor. I found the, the response was just a tiny bit better if I didn't have that inductor in the circuit. And there's my greater capacitance down here. And on the other end of the probe, we've got 40 picofarad to ground. Approximately, I haven't even measured it. I'm, I'm guessing it's anywhere from 30 to 50 picofarad and one, two, maybe three picofarads on that twisted wire pair. And the other two nodes don't have any other capacitors there, even though on the piece by simulation, I did have some, uh, I did have some capacitance, but they were so small, it was, for this one, it was 0 0.01 picofarad and this one was 0.1 picofarad and that's so ridiculously small. I mean these things just by themselves probably have greater capacitance than 0.1 picofarad just just standing in free space. And there's also this 11 kilo ohm resistor which was never really there in the first place. That's only if if I was to have a probe connector like this with a little spring spring mounted pin on the side there. That 11 kilo ohm resistor is inside the BNC connector and that makes contact between the, the ground of the connector itself and this ring trace going around the connector. And when the scope sees that there's a resistance between ground and the ring trace, then it'll automatically change the vertical ratio here changed it from 500 millivolt per division to 50 millivolt per division. But if that little pin is not present on this particular model, we can actually change it manually. Let me change channel one here, attenuation to 10x, because that's the probe I got in there, and then channel two where I'm putting my new probe. Put that on 100x. And then both of these channels 1 and 2 should be the same voltage per division. 
All right, that's enough talking about the probe. Let's see it working. Got 500, we put a 500 hertz pulse in there with an edge time of 50 nanoseconds, or I'm sorry, five nanoseconds. And come over here on the scope and we can see that the two of them are very, very close to each other. The, the blue trace, that's my 100X probe and it's very close to the 10X probe. You can see that the rise times are about 7 nanoseconds each. And let me zoom out here. And we can see that it's a very clean square wave. Very nice shape. One thing I found in my experimentation that's interesting is that you can't just whack a capacitor on either end of the coax cable and call it a day. You have to be able to vary each one independently. Let me show you that if I make this cap, the probe cap, at a minimum, and you can see we get this spike going up, and if I tune the compensation cap to level that out, it looks good. Looks like a real nice square wave, but when I zoom in, we can see that we've got a really high spike going up here at the beginning of the square wave. So let me zoom back out. And I'll tune this one to a maximum. And again, use this one to level it out. Now again, it looks like it's flat. But you can see here that I've decreased the spike, but at the same time, of de which is good, it's good that I decreased that initial spike, but at the same time I increased the rise time by a little bit, and I also decreased the uh, amplitude of this other little high frequency harmonics going on here. So I'm just going to put it back to where it was before with this one about halfway and then this one tuned appropriately and you can see that we're right about identical oops that was just a touchy connection right here once I get the the lid on this it'll be much better but there we go now we're pretty much identical with the uh, with the 10x probe and I just wanted to see what this function generator is really putting out so I put it right up against the scope got it tuned for 20 nanosecond rise time and really short BNC cable going in there and 50 nanosecond pulse width and you can see it's much cleaner, you know, there's no overshoot uh, shoot at all. It's basically exactly what it says it is right down there, even 19 nanosecond rise time. But if I put this on 5 nanosecond, in actuality the scope is showing me 10 nanosecond. So it looks like all my other previous measurements when I had the function generator set for 5 nanoseconds, it was more like anywhere from 5 to 10 nanoseconds, and I'm not surprised about that. I was kind of skeptical as to whether or not I was even getting 5 nanosecond out of this thing. And here is the ultimate reason why I built this thing in the first place, and that is so I could use the 2,000 volt probe to replace the 20,000 volt probe, which has been used here for this particular application involving a what is this? Directed Energy Incorporated Pulse Generator. Basically this giant box right here with the loud noisy fans that um, is just has big sophisticated MOSFET circuit in there to uh, switch off and on an external power supply using an external um, trigger. So here's got function generator as the, the trigger pulse and there's my high voltage peanut butter jar power supply that I built a few weeks ago. I made one slight modification to it. I added more 
of these resistors in parallel uh, with each other so I can increase the output current from 1.5 milliamp to 4.5 milliamp and um, got a divide by 10 voltage divider on there going to the DMM so multiply this by 10 and we have almost 1500 volt coming out of it and then that goes into the back of this thing and it basically just switches that 1500 volt off and on really quickly with um, it said with the according to the specs less than a 20 nanosecond rise time so channel one the yellow trace I've got the uh, 20 kV probe and you can see that it's giving me about 17 nanoseconds or so but then channel 2 my newer probe that I built has a slightly better rise time of about 14 14 to 15 nanoseconds so that's really good and you can also see how there's less high frequency harmonic there's a lot less oscillation on the 2000 volt probe versus the 20,000 volt probe and also less of a time delay I've got the Here's the, the trigger time. I'm triggering externally off of the function generator. And you can see that there's, of course, there's a lot of delay for the signal to go through this thing. But then once it actually comes out, there's a, a greater delay for the signal to go through this long cable here to the 20 kV probe than it does to go through the shorter cable of the 2 kV probe. So basically this thing works really well. It seems to work even better than the original probe that was on here. And it's not overkill. It's only, I'm only putting 1500 volt into a 2000 volt probe rather than a 12,000, rather than a 20,000 volt probe. Cause I need this back. I want to use this for my high voltage stuff. So thanks for watching all these videos about this probe design and construction. It was a lot longer than I expected, but Please give it a big thumbs up if you learned something. See you next time. And I just have one little afterthought when I was editing the video. If you want to build your own probe, your own high voltage, high bandwidth oscilloscope probe based on this design, then you don't really need to sabotage a whole bunch of other probes. I mean, I, I had a whole box full of them, so I used them because they weren't being used for anything else, but I know other people might not have very many probes to spare, so what you could do is just use a bunch of ordinary 9 megohm resistors and put in parallel with each of those a 10 picofarad capacitor, as long as they can all handle the, the voltage that you're going to give them. They, and any, basically any kind of small resistor and small capacitor would suffice. And um, they don't even have to be 9 meg ohm. They could be whatever value that you need based on the voltage division ratios that you have going on in your system.